But first, we're bringing you up close this week with the top contenders in the Republican primary race for the U.S. Senate. Today, former Nevada Assemblywoman Sharon Angle. Thanks for coming on the program. Thank you for asking me, John. So suddenly, uh, you know, a month ago, you, no one was interested in you, and suddenly you're the focus of all this attention, and people are saying, who is Sharon Angle? There's this attention in the national media now. They're saying, can she win? Is she too extreme? Uh, what, what are her positions? Uh, the real issue here is, can you win a general election? You say people are trying to marginalize you, but haven't you marginalized yourself with your own record? No, actually, that's the record that's going to win this race against Harry Reid. What has happened is that uh, Harry Reid and largely the establishment has misjudged this Tea Party movement. This is the silent majority that will be silent no longer. And we've been seeing it moving really across the land like a tsunami, I guess, since the Californians defeated those five tax increases last year. And we've watched it just go through... Uh, uh, Massachusetts, Virginia, uh, New York. We've just watched it, uh, Kentucky this last week. But I guess what, I mean, Sharon Angle has won in an assembly district up here in, in, in Reno. Mm -hmm. uh, you tried to run for Congress. You didn't win that, that race, although well, you came pretty close. Thanks I'm to close. your friends, the Club for Growth, who are helping you again. But uh, don't you think that the Republican voters, they really want to get rid of Harry Reid. Republicans really don't like Harry Reid. Don't you think they should be worried that you can't win the general election? No, I don't think they should be worried at all because it's not just about Republicans. You know, we have independent voters and we also have some conservative Democrats that want someone that they can trust. And I have that battle-tested, proven uh, conservative record that says you can look at the record and know what I've done, not just what I say I'm going to do. Are there really Democrats out there who have voted for Sharon Angle? Do they exist in this state? Yes. <laughs> yes, I have them in, in the assembly district where I won, and, and uh, yes. Let, let me show you what uh, Political, which th this week got onto the fact that you may uh, be, be uh, uh, someone who might win this primary. Here's how Political uh, described your agenda. She wants to privatize Social Security, cut federal spending by hundreds of billions of dollars, build nuclear power plants inside Yucca Mountain, abolish the federal income tax and institute a simpler, fairer, flatter tax system, defund Obamacare, pull the United States out of the United Nations, ban nearly all abortions, get rid of the energy and education departments as well as Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, and remove all campaign finance restrictions requiring instead immediate reporting of donations. Are you telling me that's a mainstream agenda? I can hear Harry Reid salivating from this TV <laughs> studio. They'd love to run. They could kill you with that agenda, could they not? No, Harry Reid is so out of touch. This is mainstream America. This is what has been winning elections across the nation. It is the Tea Party movement. It is what we, the people, of this United States want, and it's what we, the people of Nevada, want. We want to take back our country, we want to take back our government, and most of all, we want to take back our Constitution, and these are constitutional principles. I mean, there is no way you can show me any poll that shows banning nearly all abortions is a mainstream position, building nuclear power plants inside Yucca Mountain, okay, cut federal spending, privatize Social Security. People will go crazy about that kind of stuff, won't uh, they? You know, John, we all know that Social Security has been broken for years. The government has been raiding the lockbox and putting in IOUs. We really need to do something that says going forward, not right now, because we have some senior citizens that have made a contract with us. We need to be in good faith and complete our contract with them. But going forward, people that are still in the workforce right now making making their living, they should have a choice be, between giving that money to the government to take out of that lockbox or keeping it in a lockbox of their own. You really think people in this state want to see nuclear power plants 90 miles away from Las Vegas? What people in this state know is that there's great potential on a secured test site that has been doing nuclear uh, spent fuels and nuclear uh, waste uh, research and development for years. We've been transporting it in there since 1954, over 400 million miles without incident. And it has some potential to create new industry here in the De Nevada. What I've always been opposed to is a landfill there at Yelka Mountain that seals it up for the next million years. And what we need is a senator 
who's willing to challenge that thirty year policy that says we don't reprocess in this united states something that harry reid's been unwilling to do and actually has demonized the nuclear energy for many many years now we need to actually be invitational to that energy industry and say that we here in nevada would like to see the most well it's a clean energy source and it's the most cost effective energy source electrical energy source that we have and we'd like to see that potential explored here in our state you said read my don't read my lips read my record we're going to show later on in this program an ad that sue loudon has up about that now but part of your record also and steve sebelius the editor of city life brought this up uh... this liberty watch interview that you did in two thousand six about drugs and alcohol i have to read this to you because you have to explain this one to me i would tell you that i have the same feelings about legalizing marijuana not medical marijuana but just legalizing marijuana angle offered i feel the same about legalizing alcohol the effect on society is so great that i'm just not a real proponent of legalizing any drug or encouraging any drug abuse she continued i'm elected by the people to protect and i think that the law should protect I want to go out and have a drink after reading that. You, you want to bring back prohibition now? <laughs> no, John. We we uh, actually repealed prohibition with the 21st well, Amendment. Well, thanks for telling remember? me that. But what are you talking about there? You're you're the you're the one who says I feel the same about legalizing alcohol. You're you're you, you would go back and you want to put prohibition I, back I, in. You know, I think you've lost the point here. The okay, point, tell me the point. <laughs> the point is that we have big issues facing our state. We have the highest. You know, we have. 14% unemployment rate. We have the highest foreclosure. You told me to read your record. I, this is your record. You know, you said that. we're talking about things that really impact people. Where's my next job coming from? Where is, um, am I going to be able to Did stay in my home? Did you mean that when home? you said it or not? Let's just get that off the table now, and we'll move on to a more important well, issue. What we were talking about was the impact of these kinds of things on our state and on our people. You know, Mothers Against Drug Drivers, I don't think you would call them prohibitionists, but certainly they have brought a focus and an education to an issue that we've long So you don't want to outlaw alcohol? No. Sharon Angles, she's the Northern Nevada candidate who's taken the Tea Party endorsement, Tea Party Express, and now she's a real factor in the U.S. Senate race. All right, let's talk about foreign policy. Uh, Felipe Calderon, the president of Mexico, was recently here, and you had some pretty strong words on uh, KXNP, I think, with my friend Alan Stock. Here, here's what you had to say about him. We've been fighting this for a year and a half, this waterboarding of our nation. You know, they're torturing us here by inviting these despots, these tyrants, to engage in our process, and it's really outrageous that our president would even allow him to be here in our country with what I term just civil rights violations that go on in his country. Felipe Calderon is a despot. It's outrageous. He was a democratically elected president of Mexico in 2006. Now, you've been to Mexico. I have. Yes. Well, you understand then the, the fear that his citizens actually live under. That is a corrupt government. And, you know, when, when our, our president cannot even be cordial to a, an ally, uh, in uh, not in Nahu when he came from Israel, and then he allows this man to criticize one of our states. I, I mean, it's just outrageous. The, the You're talking about criticizing. In case people don't know, he criticized the Arizona that's immigration right. law. That's right. Uh, but, but but I mean, if you were the president well, of Mexico, would you criticize that Arizona immigration law? <laughs> No. No, you wouldn't. No, I don't think he has a right to criticize anything within our country. We're still a sovereign nation, even, though, first thing I, even though he's overrunning our borders. Uh, we're still a sovereign nation, and we need to be very supportive of Arizona. After all, they're only reacting to a, our own government's refusal to protect our citizens and secure the borders. What else could they do but defend their own citizens when someone gets murdered on his